Welcome everyone. In today's video, I will explain my process for creating this treasure chest diorama. And while we're at it, we will touch on these topics. So let's start. Like every other project, it all started with an idea. The idea was a simple prop that belongs to a high fantasy medieval world. So I did some study, gathered references, drew these thumbnails and picked this one. In this video, we will focus on step two and step three. So I'm starting off by adding a cylinder for the lid. The shape is a bit quirky, so working with low poly will make the job much easier. I've scaled it upward and with masking and gizmo, now I'm making the slope from left to right. Then making this curved shape with large move brush. Now after subdividing it, I'm masking the lower half to split it and delete it. I only need the upper part. For the metal frame, I'm extracting the masked area with some thickness. The lower part of the chest is just a tapered box. So after splitting and deleting the top face, I'm subdividing the box with linear subdivision enabled. Now with the tube tool, I'm drawing this closed shape to create the metal part around the box. Enabling the profile will automatically turn the tube into a box from pipe. Then I'm cloning it and placing it at the bottom. Mask, extract with thickness and repeat. Doing the same thing for the wooden planks as well. Then tweaking the shapes with move brush. And then I'm gonna mirror it in the Z axis. I'll fix this gap with mask and gizmo. You can check out this video if you wanna know more about masking. I'm using simple boxes for wooden planks on both sides and tube tool with profile for these metal parts. For the lock, I'm adding a box, creating these bevels with mask and gizmo. And for the metal handle on the side, I'm going to add a torus and bring the poly count down to four and rotate it 45 degrees and then mirror it. For the stone brick, I'm adding a box and adjusting its shape and setting the repeater to radial to clone it 15 times radially then making sure to uninstance before uh, hitting on the validate. Finally, adding a cylinder for the round stone in the middle and candles. All right, the blocking is done. Now let's sculpt some details. I'm gonna be using this brush pack by Nick Trujillo. To sculpt details, we need more resolution and for that I'm dividing the mesh and then with the flattened brush I will start adding these natural bevels. Lazy rope stabilizer can help you if you want steadier brush strokes. Then with orb crack brush I will draw these grains on the wooden planks like this. Putting more pressure near the edges. Varying the thickness and intensity to make them more interesting looking. So I've gone ahead and drawn grains on the rest of the planks the same way. Now I'm adding bevels on metal frames the same way with the flattened brush. Orb hammer brush is great for creating metal surface details like this. 
I will do the same for the lock, add bevel and then surface detail. And then make this keyhole with the stamp brush and this alpha. Repeat the process for the rest of the metal parts and then move on to detailing the stone. Subdivide and add bevels and then add surface details with rock detail brush. I sculpted these stone bricks the same way. Now let's add some cracks on these stones with orb crack brush like this. I'm drawing the melted wax shapes on the candle with mask. Then invert and scale the unmasked part. Then smooth out the details with smooth brush. Now I'm fixing the silhouette a little bit with the move brush. So that concludes the sculpting part. Now finally we will add texture and lights. First I'm gonna switch to PBR from Matcap and then add a base color for wooden planks. Now on a layer I'm gonna add color and value variations with the paint brush and this noise alpha. This will make the texture interesting and natural and do the same for the rest of the wooden parts. I'm picking some cool desaturated grey as base color for the metal parts. Metalness is set to 1 and roughness 0.5ish. 0, 0 and then tap on paint all to apply material. Now it's time to add some color variations. For the stones, I've set the metalness to zero and picked warm gray color and then apply some color variations. Wax is translucent, so light partially passes through them. I'm gonna switch to subsurface scattering to simulate this effect. And like other materials, I'm painting some color variations on the candle as well. Now in Infinite Painter I'm drawing the flame with large round brush like this. The black part will be transparent. I will draw this for the magical lights that are hovering over the lid. Back in Nomad I will add a plane and import the flame in the opacity slot and set the material to additive. Increase the opacity and paint the flame. Turn on the bloom in the post process to add glow. And simply repeat the process for the magical light and then add a point light. To create the light coming from underneath the stone, I used the same process. Now I'm adding some fake highlights and details with the paint brush. I hope you enjoyed the process, make sure to subscribe for more content like this and as always thank you for watching.